Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of John and these are the words of Jesus and they're taken from a part of the Gospel that's called the Farewell Discourses. That it's the last night of Jesus' earthly life and he's telling his disciples what to expect and how they're to, to live. And this is what he says. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up and they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, it's your day. A day of praise, a day of thanks, a day of opening scripture and Lord, speak. Speak to, to our heart of hearts that we might be transformed this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I read a story about two fellows walking in the woods. They came up on a huge hole they looked down in it, couldn't see the bottom, so one grabbed a rock, threw it down. They never heard it hit. The other fella grabbed a handful of rocks, threw it down the hole, and they didn't hear them hit either. They looked at each other and said, that hole's deep. So then one of them got an idea. I said, well, let's get that fallen tree trunk over there. We'll throw it down the hole, and surely we'll hear it hit the bottom. Well, they wrestled around with this fallen tree trunk, and they, they threw it into the hole. And while they were waiting for it to make a sound, they heard a sound, but it was behind them. They heard something running toward them in the woods, and it was a goat. It broke the, the clearing, jumped directly over them and into the hole. They looked at each other, couldn't believe what was going on. Pretty soon, a farmer walked up, said, have you seen my goat? They said, it was incredible. We, we heard him running through the woods, and then we saw it. He jumped directly over us and into that hole farmer said, well, that couldn't be my goat. My goat was tied to a fallen tree. <laughs> well, it's, it all depends what you're connected to, what you're tied to. And that's what Jesus is talking about here, that we're connected, we're tied, not with a, a loose best knot that he could ever tie. No, it says abide. And abide's not a word that we use much nowadays, but it means to be a part of. That Jesus is a part of us and we're a part of him. That it means to be connected, to dwell. That he, he grows within us. And that's what he's telling his disciples. That 
How will they live in the future? They'll live with him growing through them. And very clearly he tells them, I am the vine, you are the branches. This is who we are in Christ. We're so connected, we're so tied, we're so closely that, that he lives in us, that he dwells in us, that he grows in us. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference that it transforms who we are. That Jesus gave his life on the cross to make this connection complete. That even sin couldn't separate us from God. That he died on the cross to take away the power of everything that would separate us from God. The sin, the shame, the fear, the self-centeredness, the will, the will that's, that's stuck on what we want rather than what God wants. That there's a Jesus connection in you and me. And we're to let that, that Jesus connection grow and bear fruit. And th that's what I want to talk about this morning, the Jesus connection. The Jesus connection that bears fruit, the fruit of love. And this is what verse 9, Jesus says, Just as the Father has loved me, I've also loved you. Abide in my love. There's that word again. Abide in my love. When I was in college, my roommate was my best friend. His name's Chuck. We still get together every once in a while now. Well, Chuck fell in love. I don't mean a little bit of love. I mean full-blown smitten in love. He thought this girl was the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. He'd come home from, or come back to the room from, from a date. And usually he would be doing some, um, reenacting some scene from, from uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. And he'd be, she gave me water or something like that. That he was Quasimodo and she was beautiful Esmeralda and she was everything and he was nothing. She was the light and he was the darkness. And oh, she, he was just so in love until she said, can we be friends? <laughs> well, then that magical, mystical falling in love that just seemed to take him over so naturally, it kind of turned a little bit, kind of turned a whole lot. Because there was a difference between the, the falling in love magical missile and a friendship. Well, we know that there are differences in love. But English doesn't do us any, any service in that. We only have one word for love, the love of a, of a girlfriend, of, of a boyfriend, of a spouse, of a, of a friend, of a child, of a parent. We only have one word. And, and we can't really read it when, when it talks about just as the Father has loved me, I so love you. Well, there's a word for the love of a father and that's storge, but that's not the word that's used here. That's a curious thing. And then later on he says, this command, he, he says, you are my friends. And that greater love has no one than this. Well, even though he's talking about the love of a friend, he doesn't use the word in Greek, philia, which is the love of a friend. Curious thing. The Apostle Paul says, husbands, love your wives. And even though he's talking about a husband loving a wife, he, he doesn't use that word in Greek, eros. Instead, he uses the same word, the Bible uses the this, this same word. Jesus uses the same word. And that word is agape in Greek. And agape isn't a natural love, like, easy as, as, as falling a lover, that mystical, magical love of, of eros. It's not the love of a friend, where, that side by side where you're both focused on, on something in common out there that draws you together because you're drawn to the, this, the same common interest, the same common love. It's not the love of a parent and a child, not even the depth of a, a motherly love that, that's so, so, so natural that it's a love that's foundation is in a decision, in a choice. It's in the will. It's a love that takes action. It's not a love of poems and songs and falling. It's the love that Jesus has for, for you and for me. That he gave his life on the cross 
before we were lovable. It's rooted in, in Jesus' decision to choose to love you and to choose me before we were lovable, even before we were likable. That he chose what was best for you and for me. He chose a love where he would be tied, connected, dwell. He would abide in us and transform our wills to be his will because it's what was and what is best for you and for me. And as he abides in us and we abide in him and he begins to grow, our will begins to change and we can choose Choose to love not just the lovable, but choose to love even the one that, that has hurt us. We can choose to love the one that even has declared themselves an enemy. We can choose to let the love of Christ, the love of Jesus Christ, live through us. Well, it's the Jesus connection. And it bears the fruit of, of love. Love that's a decision, an action, a, a choice. Well, the Jesus connection not only bears the, the fruit of love, but it, it also, it bears the fruit of joy. G.K. Chesterton said, joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian life. C.S. Lewis said, joy is the business of heaven. Brother Lawrence said, joy is the surest sign of the presence of God. And this is what Jesus said in verse 11. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. He's not talking about just a sprinkle of joy or a dash or a dollop of joy. He's talking about that your joy might be made full, pressed down and overflowing, an abundance of joy. This is the last night of Jesus' life on earth. He knows that the next day he's going to the cross. He knows the next day he will suffer and he will die. It's why he's meeting with his disciples here. And he's talking joy. In the first century, there was a, an historian named Pliny the Younger much of what we know about the first century, if, if, if we have any record, written record at all, a lot of it comes from, from Pliny. And Pliny talks about Tiberius Caesar. Tiberius Caesar was the wealthiest person on earth in the first century. That Tiberius, he had armies. He had power like no man on earth. Yet with all his riches, with all his power, with all his armies, Pliny describes him as the gloomiest of mankind. Contrast that to Jesus, who was born in a, in a shed. Jesus, who at about age 30 died on a cross. Jesus, who on the last night of his earthly life, Scripture tells us he took bread and he gave thanks. That on the last night of his life, knowing that he would die the next day, he practiced thanks. The Bible tells us that and after they ate, that they sang a hymn that night. Well, we know what that hymn was. It was the great Halil. It's a hymn of praise to God. That on the last night of his earthly life, knowing that he was, he sang praise and thanks to God. That the life of Jesus was a life that was a life of joy because it was rooted in the worship of God. It was rooted in gratitude. It was rooted in thanks, not in the circumstances. James Moore tells a story about a woman who goes to her doctor. She gives, has a long list of, of her ailments. And the doctor listens and then gives her an exam. 
at the end of the exam, he has a hunch what a problem might be. So he points to a wall that has several empty pill bottles on it. He turns to her and he says, you see those empty bottles over there? He said, in those bottles, I could put anything. I could put enough poison that would make a person sick and, and maybe even die. He said, or in that same bottle, I could put medicine that would relieve a headache, that would kill a bacteria, or that would relieve a, a fever, lower a fever. He goes on to say, he says, each day we have a choice that we decide what we'll put in this life. Jesus, he's connected. He grows. He dwells on the inside of you and me. And he gives us a choice of praise. He gives us a choice of joy. He gives us a choice of, of thanksgiving. That it's available to us each day and we bear the fruit of of joy because of the Jesus connection the Jesus connection it bears the fruit of joy it bears the fruit of love and the last thing that I want to talk about this morning it bears the fruit of sacrifice verse 13 says greater love has no one than this that one lay down his life for his friends well Jesus one minute is talking about joy and now he's talking about sacrifice. Laying down his life for his friends. Read a story about a, a farm supply salesman that was driving out in the country hoping to make a new sale. He saw a farmer sitting on the front porch and he went up to him just to strike up a conversation. He said, how's your potato crop this year? The farmer said, well, I was afraid there wasn't going to be enough rain so I didn't plant any. He said, oh, well, how's your cotton crop this year? He said, well, last year, bull weevil got my neighbor's cotton crop, and I was afraid bull weevil would get mine, so I didn't plant any. He said, oh. He said, what about your corn crop? He said, well, you know, I was afraid if I began plowing for that corn crop that my, my tractor would break down, so I didn't plant any. No, this year I just decided I'd play it safe, and I didn't plant anything. <laughs> well, it's kind of a funny story until I began to, to put, put together some things that I'd been reading over many years and it never struck me. It never struck me so hard as it struck me in preparing for this sermon. That Jesus' harshest words, his harshest warning was not toward bad things that people did. That story after story after story after story after story. Jesus' harshest warning was not for the bad things people did. It was for people who did nothing. That the story that Jesus tells of the fig tree. That the owner calls for it to be dug up and cast out of the garden. Is because it wasn't a bad fig tree. It was that it didn't bear fruit. It did nothing. The story that Jesus tells of the, the rich man who goes on a journey and he, he gives five bags of gold to one of his servants, two bags to another, and one bag to the, to the last. Well, the, the last servant who had the, the one bag of gold, he, he buried it. He did nothing. It wasn't that he was a he did bad things with his money. He did nothing. The story of the Good Samaritan is a story where the Samaritan, where a, a man falls among the thieves, and it's the priest and the Levite who do nothing. They see the problem and they do nothing. That the story of Lazarus and the rich man, that the rich man is in Hades with his, his nose full of, 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 of burning sewage. And it's there that he realizes that he's sitting in Hades not because he's been a bad man, but because Lazarus 
sitting at the end of his driveway, was poor and had sores, and he did nothing. That Jesus tells a story of a final judgment where he separates the sheep from the goats, and on the right, he, he puts the sheep, and he says, well done. And on the left, he puts his goats. And the goats, the goats receive the harshest of warning, the harshest condemnation. Why? Because they've been bad? No. Because when he was hungry, they did nothing. When he was thirsty, a stranger, naked, they did nothing. When he was sick and imprisoned, they did nothing. That Jesus' harshest judgment, that is his harshest warning, isn't for those who do bad, it's for those who do nothing. Who do nothing. That Jesus calls us to bear the fruit of sacrifice. Not to play it safe, but the fruit of sacrifice, the fruit of, of risk, the fruit of sticking our neck out, the fruit of doing something for him. Right now, we're in the middle of our pledge campaign. And I want to invite you. It may be that you've, you've never stuck your neck out. You've never risked. You've never done anything for the cause of Christ. This church, the people of God have, have joined together that just in the last, the, the last year, in the last 18 months, we fed 43,000 people. 43,000 people in the last 18 months because we put our little with God's much. And sometimes it's a risk. Sometimes the, we stick our neck out for that sacrifice. That every week, there are 40 12-step meetings that go on here at this church because people are willing to sacrifice, to stick their neck out, to risk. And I want to invite you to be a part of that. This year, 70 young people made a first-time commitment to Jesus Christ because folks were willing to stick their neck out, to risk, to sacrifice. Next week, 80 young people will be confirmed here in this church. I want to invite you to be a part of what God is doing here in this world. I want to invite you to to go online and to, to pledge, to pledge. It might be a risk. It might be a sacrifice. But it's what the Jesus connection does inside of us. It reaches out. It sacrifices. It sticks its neck out. It, it risks. Not under our power. Because our temptation is to play it safe and do nothing. But the power of Jesus Christ, where we put our little with God's much, it changes the world. And it starts right here. I just named a few things. But when we put our little with God's much, that's where the miracles happen. And I want to invite you into God's miracle this morning. Pray with me. Jesus, this is your day, and in your day, you call us to stick our neck out, to risk. Jesus, you call us to sacrifice. And may we use this, this time that where we look at our next step in faith as a time to, to make a risk, to stick our neck out, to give, and to give generously to you, Lord, and Give us the discernment that we might see who it is you would have us serve. Lord, I also know that there are folks listening this morning that have been unwilling to stick their neck out and practice joy because the minute we stick our necks out and we begin to practice joy, well, it seems like sometimes disappointment 
Disappointment is sometimes the result, and it is. But your joy doesn't depend on our circumstances. That the Jesus connection, you living your life through us, dwelling, growing, abiding inside of us, it brings a joy that we can't get on our own. When we practice praise, we practice giving thanks, we practice worship of you. Lord, to practice love means to, that we're going to be heard. There's no doubt about that at all. But being connected to you, it gives us strength to practice the fruit of love, to stick our neck out, to risk. Even, even when we're sometimes hurt because you give us strength we don't have. Not for a, a natural love, but for a supernatural love. One that transforms us to love. Folks, even when they're not lovable. Sometimes even when they're not likable. Because that's the way you chose to love us. Grow in us, power of your Holy Spirit, that this day we might be transformed. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.